Paul, those results are always difficult to take. Um, well, obviously, I did. you know the results. Um, the results, not the biggest thing that's difficult to take. It's the performance that's the that's the the toughest thing. Um, I mean, for, let me say firstly that I think everybody's thoughts at the football club are with the young lad who's who's been stretched off. Um, he's obviously in a bad way. He's on his. I don't know if he's already gone to hospital, but. Um, you don't like to see those things. Um, I was concerned when, when Mox went for it. I thought it was a dangerous tackle for both of them to go to. Um, I don't think either of them have tried to, to do each other. Um, they've both just gone full-blooded. Um, but obviously our thoughts are with him and, and hope, it's, uh, hope he gets a speedy recovery from that. Um, but I mean, that's, that's the real downer on the night. Um, the level of performance was, was horrible um, from us. Um, and I thought they showed that they're very, very good technical football players. We sort of struggled our way through the first half, didn't we? That sort of set a tone. Oh, we struggled right through from start to finish. Um, and you know the biggest concern for it, it's not a one-off. Um, so we struggled against Carlisle City, struggled against Wigan, against Blackburn, against Middlesbrough in these games. Um, that's a concern. Um, it was as if tonight Asking professional footballers to play a game of football was a bit of a chore to them. Um, and not all of them, because some of them have, have gone about it in the right way. The ones who, to be fair, we can normally depend on, we can rely on. Um, but there was, there was a number tonight who were absolutely way off it. Um, who, you know, the scary thing is, probably have to use some of them at the weekend because we haven't got enough to just discard these we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to use them but they haven't done themselves any favors tonight it's as simple as that the final third wasn't it again it's that, that lack of creativity made it really tough I know that's that's clutching at straws to say final third there was we didn't compete properly we didn't have any we didn't have any spark to us we'd so we, we, had, we had nothing tonight it's as simple as that there was that was a you know, people, people have talked about the problems we have against Harrogate and the level of performance we've had against Harrogate. That, is, um, that has to go down as, as the worst since I've been at this football club. That was um, really, really poor. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Forrest's young lads because I thought they showed a real enthusiasm, a real desire to play, um, passed the ball well, got forward players with life about them. We look like a group of players who've been dragged together off the street, um, and and that's what I say. This isn't a one-off. It's not, it's not a case of these lads have never played together. These have played quite a number of games recently, and um, that level of performance is absolutely nowhere near what what's expected of us. I know you're never happy with any goal conceded. What did you make of the, of those two? Um, well, the first goal. Um, <coughs> Starts down in, on, our, on our left hand side when Ryan Edmondson's not strong enough to keep hold of the ball. We give a cheap free kick away, we allow him to play. Terry Ablade has not got a clue that the left back's behind him, and then Jocko gets beaten at the near post. So, all goals have mistakes. Um, there's just three that I've counted straight away. Um, the second goal, we, we had no. We didn't deal with runners, we didn't deal with little combinations and, and the lad smashes it in the roof of the net. But listen, the goals are the goals are one thing, it's the whole performance tonight that is totally unacceptable. Um, sadly we do have to accept it because it's our players. Um, but I'm afraid players are, have to have a real strong look at themselves and work out what they want to do, what they want to do with their professional career, what they want to do with their life. Um, because on that, you know, there's, there's not really many places they're going to go if they perform like that. And they need to, it, they need to give themselves a shake. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's not, I can't defend that. I can't stand here and say that it's, I'm not even going to say it's my fault, it's the staff's fault. That's about players that. We prepared them for this game. We, we did the right, the, the normal preparation that we do for it. Um, and to produce that level of performance is just way off it. Is it a case that we can look at it and say the under-21 side, they play together a lot in their league, or is that not even a mitigation? No, no it's not. I'm not even going to go down that route. Um, that tonight is not acceptable, end of story. 
What do you say to them after a performance like that? How do you lift them? Because they'll want to be lifted and, and show you that they are worthy. No, hang on a minute. Um, they're human beings, they're adults. They don't need somebody to lift them. You have to lift yourself. You're a professional footballer. This is your bloody job. So you have to lift yourself. You have to be professional. You've got to go about your business properly. You know, we've got... We have standards that we try to set. And, and I'm studying now after probably one of our best days as a football club on Saturday. Take Wembley out of it. That's one of our best days. For us to go to Bolton Wanderers and take 4,500 loyal supporters there, to put on a performance like we did, to win the game, to come away and everybody's buzzing. I, I'm walking down the street, I've got people bibbing their horns at me, I've got people talking to me, probably more than they did after Wembley. That's, that's how positive it is. And tonight I come here and I watch that and, and people have paid their hard earned money to come and watch that tonight. That was disgraceful from them. So, no, I'm not going to lift them. No, I'm not. Um, they're going to have to lift themselves because otherwise they're going to get, they'll just go and fall by the wayside. It's simple as that. Um, and as I said to you, there's a situation where I would probably want to put three players on the bench on Saturday, but I've got to put seven on. I've got to do what's right for the first team. Um, so now we'll see. We'll see what reaction we get from everybody because that tonight is just absolutely nowhere near. And I've, and I've said it in there. I've said it to the players. Um, because that's not that's not how you live you live your life to be a professional footballer. That's not what you produce. Because I, I can accept, I, I can even accept bad performances from players every now and again. But we're talking about a theme of whatever it is, four or five games, who have produced that, and that's not good enough. Kill them off at half time. Was that always the plan? Always the plan. Yeah, yeah. We um, he was always coming off after 45. Him and. Um, him and Mox were always going to share the game tonight. Um, ben Barkley was always coming off after 60 minutes, his first game. So, so they've come through that OK. Um, and and we, we've just got to, got to see how everybody is going into the weekend now. Did Mox come out of that challenge with, with Sam Collins OK? Yeah, he's. Um, I mean, he got caught um, sort of just below his shin pad, above his ankle. Again, I'll say it, I don't think either player went to do each other. That wasn't a tackle. It's a tackle that on the sideline I'm watching thinking, no, don't go for it, just just back out. And Mox has said in there, I couldn't back out at that point. And I said, no, I'm sorry, Mox, at 2-0 down with two minutes of, of stoppage time to go. Yes, you do pull out of them sort of challenge. You do not go for that because, they're, unfortunately, they're leg-breaking tackles and, you know, one person's come out of it on that on the bad side. The score in the other game, Accrington seemed to be running away with it. So it's still there. We can still get through if we do it properly against Harrogate and the Nottingham Forest result goes our way. Oh, listen, there's, there's, um, there's too many things to concern ourselves with before that game. Um, if we perform anything like we did tonight, we don't deserve to be going through. It's as simple as that. And, you know, we can't. It's the performance, the, it, the whole performance. This is an opportunity for lads to play in a, in a proper game, in a, in a game. You can, when, when you're not in the first team, you can complain about playing bounce games at training grounds and this sort of stuff, and they never, they never feel real. This is a real game tonight. Um, regardless of the competition, it's a real game. It's a game where people can, can stamp their authority on a game. It's a game where they can go knocking on my door and say, Look what I did in that game. I, I deserve an opportunity, but that, that's that, that's not. So let's forget about forget about the next game. We've got we've got other things to concern ourselves with over the next few weeks. Some big big games to to get ourselves ready for, and that's what we've got to do. Last one from me, Paul. About that, it's Orient next. That's what it's all about. Uh, well, it's a great game to look forward to. You know, it's a big game for us, and we have to. I wanted to keep the momentum from getting a late equaliser against Peterborough. I wanted to keep the momentum from getting that performance and that result against Bolton Wanderers. This has knocked me for six, I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, but we've got to get ourselves ready. The group of players who went and performed so well at Bolton have got to get themselves ready to go again this weekend in another really good League One fixture.